Hey everybody and welcome back to some more All The Mods 3 Expert Mode. Last episode, we were working on setting up our new audibling system here with the macerator and the electric furnace from Industrial Craft Classic. And between episodes, I've done yet more mining, trying to get as many ores as I possibly could. Specifically, I was trying to get even more of the nickel here. I still didn't manage to find all that much of it. We've got four nickel ore right now, which will get us 12 in VAR. But really, this stuff seems super rare and super difficult to find. But on top of that, I also wanted to get as much coal as possible. And that is because in today's episode, I want to work on trying to get a basic logistics pipe system up and running. And to do that, we are going to need two diamonds. Now, as I mentioned in previous episodes, in this mod pack, diamond ore is not available in the overworld. And so if we want to get diamonds, we either have to go through to the nether, which we can do, but it will take quite a while to get there. We've got to go through the rest of Industrial Craft 2 and also go through quite a bit of Britannia as well. But it turns out there is an alternative way to get diamonds in the early game using Industrial Craft Classic. If we type in diamond into JEI, you'll see that there is the normal diamond up at the top here, which can be found in the nether uh, under Y level 120. But there is another diamond from Industrial Craft Classic called the Industrial Diamond, which is essentially a one-for-one -one replacement. It can be used in all the same recipes that a normal diamond would be used in, and you can make it by compressing a coal chunk. A coal chunk is made with eight compressed coal balls and one obsidian, and those compressed coal balls can be made by putting a coal ball into a compressor, and the coal ball is eight pulverized coal and one flint. And so, essentially, this recipe is a ton of coal with a little bit of flint and a little bit of obsidian. But if you can get all that, you can make diamonds without having to go to the nether which is exactly what we're going to do because one of the items that we need today is the provider logistics pipe and to make that we need the logistics programmer which requires an advanced chip which requires two diamonds so if we're going to make two diamonds that means we need two of these coal chunks which means that we need 16 of these compressed coal balls which means we need 16 of the normal coal balls which means that we need two stacks 128 pulverized coal and so what i'm going to do right at the start of today's episode is i'm going to grab two stacks of coal we're going to put the first one into the macerator as soon as we can get that gold out of there we're also going to put a bit of fuel into our generator and so we'll get that going this is going to take a while because the macerator is really really slow right now but uh, hopefully throughout the course of today's episode we should be able to get uh, two stacks of pulverized coal in time for when we actually need it to make the provider logistics pipe whilst we're waiting for that to finish we of course do have to make ourselves a compressor to be able to compress all of that coal into a diamond and so for that compressor we need six stone one machine block and one electronic circuit all stuff that we've made in the previous episode and all stuff that shouldn't be too difficult in the grand scheme of things we are going to need a few more invar plates and i have gone ahead and made a little bit more invar in our smeltery here so i'll go ahead and pull two of those out We'll quickly grab the reinforced iron that is already in our blast furnace. And on top of that, I'll also grab a little bit of copper so that we can use a little bit of this rubber that we have to make some more of these copper cables like so. And that should, I think, be pretty much everything it takes to make ourselves a compressor. We do have some stone in here. We have a redstone in here. We also have some spare iron plates from the last episode as well. And so over in our crafting station, we can make an electronic circuit. And for now, I will make two of these just in case we want to make another industrial craft machine in today's episode. And then for the machine block, the only thing that we are missing is one block of clear glass, which again, I have ready in the smeltery here. And so that should be pretty much everything we need to make our compressor. Uh, while we wait for that, actually, I did also make another stone drum here for lava. As it turns out, these stone drums do retain their inventory even when you break them. And so you can pick them up and put them back down and they still have the fluid inside of them, which is fantastic. So I did make one of these run over to the lava area, fill it up with 16 buckets worth of lava. And so now if we do need to top up our smeltery, we don't have to run all the way over uh, to that lava waypoint 233 meters away. We can just grab some from that tank there, which is going to make life much, much easier. Uh, but nevertheless, back over here, that is a machine block and Kapow, that is a compressor. Now, one thing that I did mention in the last episode that I was unsure about is whether or not we can move these industrial craft machines without them breaking. And between episodes, I jumped into a single player world. I tested it out. And it turns out that we cannot move these machines, at least not with a pickaxe. If I try and break this macerator, um, I will not get a macerator back. What I will get back is a machine block. So 
if we were to try and break this, we would essentially lose all of the resources that are not the machine block. Now, thankfully, the machine block is kind of the most expensive part of the machine, so we're not really losing too much, but ideally, we would like to get the entire master it to back. And so, um, with any of the industrial craft machines, specifically any of the machines that require a machine block to make, if you want to move them, you have to first make an Industrial Craft 2 wrench. Now, there are a few different types. The normal wrench from Industrial Craft has a chance. It, it basically increases your chance of getting the machine back, but it's not guaranteed. So if you make this and you right click on a machine, the machine will pop out, but there's a chance that the machine still just turns into a machine block. If you want to guarantee that it doesn't turn into a machine block, you have to make the electric wrench, which you will see has a mode for lossless uses. You'll see right now it says lossless uses left, 15. And so if you make the electric wrench, charge it up, and then toggle the lossless mode, you can then use it to guarantee that your machines will not be broken when you try and move them. For the time being, we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to not move our machines so that we do not lose them, which should not be a problem whatsoever. For now, we'll go ahead and hook this up with some copper cable. And eventually, when we have our coal balls, we can compress them and then turn them into diamonds. So now that, that is taken care of, let's start working on a little bit of logistics pipes. So the quest here, and I'm going to skip these two quests for the time being, but we'll come back to uh, this dynamo quest later on in the episode. But the logistics pipes quest wants us to make one logistics power junction, one request logistics pipe, 16 unrouted transport pipes, and four basic logistics pipes. And thankfully, none of those items are particularly hard to make. The power junction requires some redstone, some iron, a logistic block frame, which is more redstone, more iron, and some wood, and then a basic chip, which is made by smelting a raw basic chip, which is some iron plates, some reinforced iron ingots, and some sandstone. So pretty much all of that we should have. I'm gonna grab all of our iron, a good amount of redstone, and some wood. I'll also grab some sand as well for that sandstone. And then from there, this shouldn't be too difficult for us. The actual unrouted logistics pipe is also super easy to make, requiring some iron, some glass, and some redstone. So we should probably get some regular old glass smelting in our furnace here. And then other than that, the basic logistics pipe does require one of these FPGA items, which is made by smelting raw FPGA, which is really the most expensive part, but thankfully you do get 16 raw FPGA per craft here. And, uh, and really it's not all too difficult. So if we just quickly grab a little bit of lapis and also quickly grab a little bit of sleep, we should be able to, uh, to get all the basic items going. Now, Logistics Pipes has changed a little bit since uh, the last version of the mod, which was back in, uh, I believe, 1.7.10. And so uh, there are a few changes being made, including the addition of the Logistics Program Compiler, uh, the Logistics Disk, and also the Logistics Programmer, all of which we'll get to in just a second once we actually have uh, the basics of a Logistics Pipe system up and running. But essentially, the Logistics Power Junction, which is the first item that we are going to make here, this is used to transfer redstone flux into power that the logistics pipe system can handle. So if you don't have one of these, you can't power your logistics pipe system. And so this thing is kind of the core of the logistics pipe setup. You need one of these. If you don't have it, the system just won't work. And so this is, of course, the first thing that we are going to make. And thankfully, with two basic chips, we should now have pretty much everything it takes. We do indeed good stuff. For now, I'm going to put this probably just like here for now. We'll move that in a second. Now, of course, to power it, we do need a source of redstone flux, and that is where this previous quest comes into play. Full steam ahead wants us to make a steam dynamo from thermal expansion. Now, for this, we need three iron, two copper, one copper gear, and then one heat conductor. The heat conductor is made with six plastic and three bronze. None of that looks too difficult. We do already have six bronze in here, which is fantastic. We are a little light on rubber, but we do have a yet more sticky resin in our chest here. And I do still want to make an extractor at some point. And actually, real quick, how expensive is the extractor? It's really not too bad. We've got the spare electronic circuit. We can make another machine block. It's just four tree taps, which are all made with wood. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take most of that sticky resin. I am gonna leave a little bit in so that we have enough to craft the dynamo. But while we're waiting for that to smelt, what I would like to do here is grab four more of these invar plates and I would like to make an extractor because the extractor, as I've shown before, is going to allow us to turn one sticky resin into three rubber, essentially tripling the amount of rubber that we get per sticky resin, which in an expert pack just seems like a no brainer. The resources are already hard enough to get. There's no need to handicap ourselves by, you know, purposefully getting one third of the amount of rubber that we could possibly get. And so extractor, let's go ahead and bookmark that and then see if we've got what it takes here. Uh, we're missing, of course, that one bit of glass, which is fine. 
And then other than that, we're of course missing the four tree taps, which if I'm not mistaken, uh, do not stack. They don't. So you do need a bit of inventory space to, uh, to make this work. But once we have it, we can grab the glass. We can make a machine block like so. And then finally, an extractor like that. Nice. So for now, again, we'll throw this down probably right about here and we'll hook up yet another copper cable like that. And we'll throw in our sticky resin as well as yet more wood into our generator, which I assume is now completely out. It is. And while we're at it, we might as well also throw a tiny little bit more coal into the macerator, um, which by the way is pumping coal into the hopper. The pulverized coal, of course, can't make its way into the electric furnace, but uh, once it's all done, it should be down uh, in this wooden hopper for us to collect, which is perfectly fine by me. Uh, so where were we? We were making the dynamo, of course. So for the dynamo, we needed a copper gear. The copper gear, of course, made in the smeltery. So we'll grab four copper ingots and throw those in like so. And while we're waiting for that, one thing that we do have to think about is how we're going to power our steam dynamo. And for those who don't know, the steam dynamo generates power, but requires water and solid fuel. And that leads us directly into the sink from cooking for blockheads. For those who don't know, the sink is essentially a block that will provide you with infinite water. And to make it, it's actually quite easy. It's three iron, five terracotta, and one bucket of water. Five terracotta, of course, being five blocks of clay smelted. And so if we go ahead and set those going, once those are done, we should be able to make ourselves our very first sink. And that sink is going to allow us to pump as much water as we like over into our steam dynamo, essentially meaning that we don't have to constantly go grab a bucket, fill it up with water, put it in the dynamo over and over and over again. Just going to make our lives a little bit easier. So that is almost there. Now, to get the water out of the sink, we are going to need some kind of fluid pipe. I think right now the easiest one for us to make is going to be the transfer node for fluids from X Utilities 2. This is made with redstone, transfer pipe, chiseled stone, and a bucket. The transfer pipe is made with stone slabs, redstone, and a glass. And thankfully, we do still have a bit of stone in our inventory. And so if we go ahead and do something like this, that gets us a whopping 64 transfer pipe. That's a very uh, generous recipe indeed. We actually don't need uh, six terracotta. So for now, the, uh, the five there should be more than enough. We've still got our bucket from a previous episode. So let's go and quickly fill that up with water. I do think that we're going to get the bucket back out of this recipe, but I'm actually not 100% sure on that. We do indeed, good stuff. And so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to make the transfer node. Now, that one does use up the bucket. So if you are going to do this, make sure you craft the sink before you craft the transfer node because the sink doesn't use the bucket, but the transfer node does use that bucket. So now if we go ahead and put this down, you'll see that at the top there, the tank is full of water. And no matter how much water we take out of this, it's always going to be full of water. It's essentially just an infinite water source that you can move and put anywhere. It's a really nifty if not maybe a little bit overpowered block. So now that that's taken care of, do we have what it takes to make the dynamo? I think we do. There is the heat conductor and with a little bit of iron, copper and a copper gear that gets us a steam dynamo. And for now, we've got to decide where we want to put this thing. I'm actually not too sure if we need the kiln going forward here. We've still got this thing, but we've not used it really since the first episode. Uh, but I think for the time being, and I'll probably end up moving my bed at some point because it's kind of in a bit of an awkward position right now. But I think for now, what I'm going to do is put my sink down right about here. We're going to have the transfer node on the sink like so. And then we need one of these transfer pipes like this. And then from there, we can have that pumping into a dynamo like this. And then that dynamo is going to go right next to the logistics power junction. Now, currently the dynamo is facing the wrong way. The power from the dynamo comes out of the top end. And so really we kind of want it facing the logistics power junction, which is kind of proving more difficult than I expected. Although one item that we are going to have to make at some point in today's episode is a wrench. And so I actually think now is as good a time as any. And if memory serves me right, we can make a crescent hammer like that. We can indeed good stuff. And then with the crescent hammer, we can just right click on the dynamo to rotate it until it gets to the point where it's facing the power junction. Nice. Now, it does look like this is connecting to the kiln, but the kiln doesn't have an internal tank for water. And so this should be fine. And as you can see here, the internal tank on the dynamo is full. The sink is still full. There is also a buffer of 1000 millibuckets of water in the transfer node, which is also good. And so now we can start putting really any fuel that we like into the steam dynamo. And that's going to turn the fuel and the water into redstone flux and then pump that redstone flux into the logistics power junction, which is going to store it until we have our actual logistics pipe set up up and running. So once again, I'm going to put yet more fuel into the, uh, the generator here. should probably get uh, another hopper, actually, and have just, you know, a ton of wood uh, in a chest that pumps around into the generator uh, to keep it going without having to manually fill it up. 
But once again, whilst we're still waiting for those diamonds, let's have a look at the new mechanics in logistics pipes, that being the logistics program compiler. So this thing, as we showed before, not all that difficult to make. In fact, we should have almost everything it takes to make it. There's a logistics block frame. And then from there, we get a logistics program compiler. This does need to go um, either next to the logistics power junction or next to a basic logistics pipe that is also connected to the logistics power junction. For the sake of simplicity, it makes sense to put this down right next to the power junction because otherwise it won't receive any power. And now the way that this works, or the thing that this is used for is for programming the logistics programmer. And the reason that you have to program the logistics programmer is to make specific pipes from logistics pipes. For example, the provider logistics pipe here, you'll see requires a logistics programmer, but you'll also see underneath, it says pipe program loaded provider logistics pipe. Whereas if you hover over it normally, it says no valid program loaded. So what we have to do is we have to load the program for the logistics provider pipe onto the logistics programmer, and then we can use it to craft the provider logistics pipe. Now that sounds, I think, more complicated than it actually is. Essentially, all we have to do is start by making one of these logistics disks, which thankfully are really not too difficult to make. It's four redstone, four iron, and one gold nugget, like so. We only need the one for the time being. We're gonna put that in the top left slot over in the programmer, like so. And then from there, I believe we want to click on basic and unlock. Now, right now it says no power, connect to LP network. I feel like that should have power. Let me try moving this real quick to like a, a spot next to the, this side of the compiler. Maybe that will work. Again, basic unlock, no power, connect to LP network. Okay, in that case, what we might have to do here is put a basic logistics pipe between the logistics power junction and the logistics program compiler. For that, all we need to do is grab, of course, some basic logistics pipes, which require that FPGA that we talked about earlier, which thankfully, again, not too difficult. So we'll begin smelting that up. Whilst we wait for that to smelt, we do, of course, have to make some basic unrouted logistics pipes, which are the easiest pipe to make. And thankfully, we've got everything it takes to make them. I will make two lots of those because we are going to need definitely more than eight throughout the course of today's episode. And if we come back over, unrouted pipe plus FPGA, gets a basic logistics pipe. Nice. So if I do this and this, I'm hoping that this now registers as connected and receiving power. We'll try basic unlock. It does, nice. So once you clicked unlock, it does take a little bit of time. I'm not quite sure why the, they decided to make this take time. Like that, you just have to wait for this bar to fill up, uh, which, you know, takes maybe a minute. It's not particularly slow, but it's also unnecessary in my mind. I would uh, kind of prefer it if maybe it went faster, if you had more power. But nevertheless, we're just going to wait for this thing to uh, to finish. And a full green bar later, we now have a bunch of options on the right-hand side here. We want the provider logistics pipe, which is this one here. So I believe now we hit compile, which again comes up with another screen, which hopefully doesn't take as long. It doesn't. It's going a lot faster this time. But essentially, all that's going to do is that's going to unlock us the ability to program the provider logistics pipe into the logistics programmer, which is then going to allow us to use the logistics programmer to make the provider logistics pipe, if that makes sense. So there we go, that is now unlocked. And as soon as we put one of these logistics programmers into this top right hand slot, we can then click flash and that's gonna put this software essentially onto the programmer, at which point we can then use it. So that's essentially what's new with uh, with this version of logistics pipes. And so what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna keep putting fuel into this generator. I'm gonna keep macerating down this coal to get all the pulverized coal that we need for the two diamonds. And I'll be back in a second. Okay, so quite a lot of coal macerating later, and we are just one piece of coal away from having 128 pulverized coal, the exact right amount that we need in order to make our two industrial diamonds. So the only things that I believe we are missing now are 16 flint, which I didn't check, but we do have. And we also need two pieces of obsidian. Now, the whole point of this second quest line here is getting you to the nether. And there is a quest called Obsidian Breaker, which wants us to make a man of steel pickaxe head to make some obsidian. However, much like with the alternate diamond recipe, there is an alternative way, albeit a more expensive way of getting obsidian if we don't want to go through and get a man of steel pickaxe head, which of course we will do at some point in the future. But for now, what we can do is craft together two water cells and two lava cells from industrial craft, and that will get us obsidian. And because we only need two pieces of obsidian, this should be the much easier way for us to do it. And thankfully, the cells here are very easy to make. Indeed, it is just four tin ingots. And so, one, two, three, and four. That gets us 16 cells. From there, we can go 
over to our lava drum and then one two three and four and then of course the same thing is true over by the water here one two three and four fantastic we can then craft those up like so and that gets us to obsidian nice so from there we can come back over we can grab our very last piece of pulverized coal which is in there we can then come back to the crafting table and do something like this and this as well as the flint of course in the middle like that that's going to get us the 16 coal balls which we can then put into the compressor and not too long later they are now all compressed up into coal ball form so we can craft them once again with the obsidian and then of course head back over for the final time to the compressor to turn those two coal chunks into two industrial diamonds and then as soon as we have those we have everything it takes to make the logistics programmer which requires some iron some gold a blank module which requires redstone paper and a gold nugget thankfully we do have a little bit of sugarcane in here and so getting that paper should not be too difficult for us whatsoever uh, we should still have some gold nuggets from earlier we do indeed and then on top of that we also need uh, one more fpga which we have 15 of in our furnace and then finally we need the advanced chip which is made with two diamonds and two raw basic chips which we can make with iron plates reinforced iron and sandstone just like we did at the start of today's episode we're just a couple of iron plates short and so i'll go ahead and throw uh, some more iron in there our diamonds are done so we can grab those and once the iron plates are done that gets us four of these raw basic chips which we can then craft up with our two diamonds like so and that is going to get us everything it takes to make a raw advanced chip which we can finalize by sticking it in the furnace we actually get two of these and so we can make something else that would normally require diamonds as well like a logistics security station uh, so long as the recipe doesn't require two advanced chips like the uh, remote order which we're going to have to wait a little bit uh, to get but for now we have the advanced chip and so i think that is everything it takes just as soon as we make the blank module and also grab the remaining iron and gold to make the programmer nice and so finally over here what we can do is we can put the logistics programmer in the top right we can click on the provider logistics pipe program and we can click flash and that is going to apply that program to the logistics programmer and thus allow us to start making provider logistics pipes so isaac why have you done this what was the point of going through all of that that seemed like a lot of hard work was it worth it well i think hopefully so now what we need to do is we need to make ourselves uh, one request logistics pipe at least one preferably more provider logistics pipes and then maybe quite a few basic logistics pipes we'll start with the request one because the request one really isn't too bad we just need four invar plates we do have a fair bit of invar left in here so we'll start making all of those and then on top of that we need two basic logistics pipes one basic chip which we can get by uh, smelting the basic chips that we have in our inventory and then of course the uh, basic logistics pipes do require the fgpa i'm gonna make maybe like six of these we might even have to make some more fgpa in today's episode because we are going to need quite a few of those basic logistics pipes especially if we want to make our logistics pipe system quite large which i think we uh, we probably do but that is everything to get the request logistics pipe and then finally the thing that we've been spending all this time working on the provider logistics pipe we'll stick with one for now and i'll make some more between episodes to kind of flesh out everything else but essentially logistics pipes is a mod that allows us to kind of organize our storage and also uh, transport items from place to place more easily so what i mean by that is for example if we get the request logistics pipe and we put it down right about here now this does need to be connected up to uh, the power junction so what we're going to do is we're going to run some unrouted transport pipe over like this to the request pipe and then we're also going to run pipes over to our chests now i think what i'll do again just to kind of show how this works real quick is for now i'm going to put this right here so this chest has nothing in it for now we'll put in a furnace just so we know there's something in there now with logistics pipes whenever you hit a junction you want to make sure that you have a basic logistics pipe so there's unrouted and there's basic pipes the unrouted pipes are basically dump pipes if items are going through dump pipes they don't know where they're going they will just go randomly so for example if they come to an intersection like this and the intersection is made up entirely of unrouted pipes the item doesn't know where to go and so it will always just go in a random direction however if there is a basic logistics pipe in the middle of that junction it will tell the item where to go so for example if we were to request an item from our request logistics pipe from a chest over here or from the kiln then that item if it goes through the basic pipe would go straight on through to the request pipe if there was an unrooted pipe here it would go any one of these three ways 
So essentially, all I'm saying here is that at this intersection here, we need to make sure we have a basic logistics pipe. And then if you're connecting up a chest, for example, if you want to be able to retrieve items from that chest, you can put down a provider logistics pipe, essentially telling the request logistics pipe that this inventory can provide things to this pipe. So if we go ahead and hook this up to power, like so, you'll notice it was red for a second there until we put the pipe down. Right now, these pipes are not getting power from the power junction. But if we do this, now they're getting power. And if we right click on the request logistics pipe, you can see the furnace. And that's because there is a provider logistics pipe next to this chest, allowing that furnace to be seen by the network. So if I was to click on the furnace and click request, it would pull the furnace from that chest and dump it out of this pipe. Pretty nifty stuff. So what we can do is we can put provider logistics pipes down over, for example, like here. And then if we do something like this and then run that over to our request pipe, I think right now what's going to happen if I request an item is it's going to come down and then it's going to go across and then over into uh, and then just bounce around or maybe pop out. Let's give it a try. So if I request some nether quartz, oh, it popped out. Nice. So the request pipe does act as a basic pipe. The request pipe is smart enough to know that the item needs to pop out here, which is pretty useful. And so essentially what we want to do here is we want to put a provider logistics pipe onto each one of these chests. And so at that point, if we need a specific item, instead of having to look through all of the chests to find that item, we can just open up the request logistics pipe and, for example, search for the item. So if we wanted iron ore, we could search for it. Uh, if we wanted, for example, 33 iron ore, we could specify the exact amount and then hit request. And that amount is going to fly out and over to us. And we can then use that for whatever we like. And it just makes finding things and, uh, you know, organizing all of your inventories a little bit easier because it doesn't matter what's where so long as everything is visible from within the request pipe. Now, that's all well and good for pulling items out of chests, but what about putting items back into chests? Of course, we could come on over and we could just dump items in like we have been doing up until now. But what we can also do is we can automate that a little bit with logistics pipes. So, for example, if we put down a wooden hopper like this and we put an item in, right now that item is just going to sit there in the pipe because the item has nowhere to go. It's even shaking ever so slightly, and I think eventually it will just pop out onto the floor like that. Now, what we can do to change that is use the basic logistics pipe. So if I was to, for example, put a basic logistics pipe on the back of this chest, like so, and then, of course, hook it up to the network with some unrouted pipe, which apparently we are completely out of. And so uh, just for the interest of demonstration, I'm going to put another uh, basic pipe here. This one doesn't need to be a basic pipe. Imagine it's an unrouted pipe. But if we do that, what we can then do is grab our crescent hammer, Right click on the basic pipe and in here, you can set this to default route. And if you do, any item that doesn't know where to go will automatically make its way to that chest. So now if I was to put in the same wire cutters, those wire cutters are going to make their way over and in through this pipe into the chest. And so what we can do is we can put a basic logistics pipe on the back of each of these chests and have a provider logistics pipe on the left or the right of each of these chests. And then we have full access to our storage system from this area. You know, we could put this chest up like so and basically have this act as a dumping ground where we can put all of the stuff that we don't need. That stuff is then going to slowly but surely make its way into a free and available chest. And then if we need anything, we can right click on here. We can grab what we need and we can request it. Pretty cool stuff. Now, that didn't work right there. And I believe the reason for that, and also I'm going to grab all this stuff back real quick. Uh, the reason for that, I believe, is that the wooden hop accounts as an inventory. And so if we... Request an item right now, what's going to happen is the sandstone comes up, it goes into the hopper, and then comes straight back down. So what we want to do is we want to move this over to a basic pipe. So there is one right here. If we do it like this, the items will still go the correct way. They'll still go over into this chest if there's space in it. Right now there isn't, and so items are probably uh, spewing out the back. Yeah, this furnace here was about to pop out of, uh, of this pipe here. But the idea is that, you know, if we wanted to, I believe we can even do something like this and connect multiple chests to one provider pipe. So now uh, we should be able to access, yeah, all of the stuff that's in this chest as well. We could even go as far as to do something like this. And I know this looks horrendous right now, but with just one of these pipes, we've managed to connect to all of our network. All of our stuff can now be found from within side of this request logistics pipe without having to go through all of these chests. And we can hook up to five double chests up to this one single provider logistics pipe. And so 
What I'm probably going to do between episodes is change this a little bit to make it look a little bit less horrendous. I'll probably move the request logistics pipe uh, to have it maybe be in the floor here. And later on down the line, we can also make a request logistics pipe. Excuse me, good sir. I'm trying to show the good people at home how to use a logistics pipe system and all of the cool things that we can do with it going forward. If you do not mind attacking me during my, uh, my video here, that would be fantastic. But what I was going to say is we can make a logistics request table, this guy right here. This is a little bit further on down the road first. We're going to need to get into Britannia. We're going to have to get a mana plate and also uh, significantly more diamonds. But once we have that, we can essentially uh, craft with inside the request logistics pipe. The table is essentially this pipe, but with a crafting table. So you don't have to you know, request items here and then move over to a crafting station to craft separately. But that is a conversation for a future episode. For now, we have a provider logistics pipe which allows us to access all of the stuff inside our chests we have a request logistics pipe which we can use to pull items out of those chests and really all we have to do is make sure that we always have enough space so that if items don't have anywhere to go they don't end up spewing out onto the floor like they're doing right now which is of course not ideal but that shouldn't be too difficult to do all we have to do is make yet more chests and yet more basic logistics pipes that we can set to unrouted mode and if you wanted to you can also uh, whitelist certain requested items so for example if I run back around uh, into here, what we can do is we can, for example, move this one, move this one. Imagine we have two basic logistics pipes, right? We have one here and one here. And both of these are set to default root. You can have more than one default root. That's fine. Uh, basically, if there's no space in this chest, which there isn't, all the items should go into this chest. So right now, if I put basically anything in here, for example, we'll do the pickaxe because we know that's not going to stack. It should go in there and it did nice but for example if there was space in both chests and you wanted it to specifically go to one of those chests you can whitelist the item so for example in here we can go ahead and put cobblestone in the request slot and it doesn't actually take any cobblestone it just takes a, a phantom version of that cobblestone but now if cobblestone goes in here all of that cobblestone is going to make its way into this chest because this chest is requesting those items now i have made a mistake here and the mistake is that this middle pipe is an unrouted transport pipe at the intersection and so this being a dump pipe doesn't know where the cobblestone has to go and so although this pipe is requesting it the unrouted pipe doesn't know that because it's not a smart enough pipe and so real quick if we were to make some more uh, unrouted pipes which we should be able to do with some glass and some redstone which we can of course request from our system now so two redstone and two glass request we can then go ahead and craft up some more unrouted pipes and if we craft one of those up into a basic pipe what we can then do is replace the quote unquote dumb pipe with a smart pipe and then if we do the same thing again with the cobblestone in here this time all of the cobblestone is going to go the correct way every single time because this pipe knows which way to route the items so just a quick little overview there that's some logistics pipes this is very messy like i said between episodes i'll organize things i'll move the chests i'll move the pipes i'll probably end up making some more pipes so we can connect everything up and in the future we'll also look at adding storage drawers to the system as well but for now guys that is where i'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's episode for now as always if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more all the mods 3 expert mode in the future be sure to go ahead and hit that like button it really does help out a lot leave a comment down below subscribe if you're new here to get notified as soon as new videos go out as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next time <laughs>